Uh, it's always great to be up here at, uh, at Penn State. It just means so, so much to me. And, and uh, I just want to say, in the beginning, we all love Penn State. And just as President Barron mentioned, we all want to make it better. That's very important to all of us. Uh, I like quotes, and I'm going to start out with a, uh, uh, with a quote. But before I do that, I want to mention, uh, I guess I talked to Lady Joan over there, and, and, uh, and, and as she brought up this play that has a lot of controversy. <laughs> Now, I, I guess the controversy is if, if you're an Oakland Raider fan. Is there any Oakland Raider fans in here? Okay. <laughs> All right. I guess the controversy is over. But, uh, uh, but it's amazing that, oh, Anthony, you can't speak on this. Okay. Uh, but still a lot of controversy over that. And it's interesting because... The origin of that play did, did start here at Penn State. And during my years here at Penn State, and those guys know, you know, roommate Gary, Lydell, Mitchell here, uh, that Joe would holler, go to the ball, go to the ball, right. <laughs> and, and I mean, we're in college, we're not paying attention, I mean, go to the ball, go to the ball, right? Yeah. So, but it's amazing. Uh, as they say, how smart your teachers and your coaches are once you leave, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? So I went to the Steelers from Penn State, and, uh, and then you know that, that one play called uh, The Immaculate Reception, in case you haven't heard, okay? <laughs> and, and, and just to give some history on that play, uh, you guys know Terry Bradshaw, right? You know what I mean? So, so Terry called the famous play 66 option. Called the play, we broke the huddle, you know, 22 seconds left, fourth down, we're losing seven to six. And so he's under center, he hikes the ball, you know, all this stuff happens, he throws it and big collision, somehow I get the ball and going for a touchdown, right? And so we're in the locker room and you guys know Terry and so Terry, you know, in front of a camera is, you know, very you know, outgoing. He said, Terry, Terry, you know, how'd you call that play, 66 option? He said, well, well I, I, I looked at Franco, he's number 33, and I looked at Frenchy Fuqua, I mean, I looked at Franco, he's number 32, I looked at Frenchy Fuqua, he's number 33, and 33 and 32 equals 66. <laughs> he said, Terry. Said Terry, no, uh, 33 and 32, 65. Well, if I'd have called that play, it'd have been the wrong play, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I guess we know he didn't go to Penn State, right? Yeah, you know, you know we do know that. But, uh, so, quote, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we use to create them. That's Albert Einstein, pretty smart guy, I would say. Well, welcome everyone, friends, my family, my Penn State family. Thank all of you for being here today. To the Lions, Paul, thank you for uh, this award today. And, uh, and thank you for letting me have a few minutes for free expression. After the last five years, it's a breath of fresh air to have free expression. So thank you. And, uh, we have been experiencing quite a time in Penn State history, and all of us should learn and grow from this. When we Penn Staters look back over the last five years, that question still loom over us is, 
where are we headed? And along the way, the last four or five years, you know, there's been a lot of twists and turns, all with a lot of challenges. But right now, at Penn State, we are, we are at a crossroad, facing one last big challenge. And what direction we take depends on the working relationship between the alumni and the current Board of Trustees. Where we go from here is an in-house problem. This is us. This is a Penn State problem. No longer is our biggest challenge about the free report. Everyone knows that was a sham from the start. Basis for nothing. No longer is our biggest challenge with the NCAA. Everyone knows they broke their own protocols and procedures and had no grounds to issue the sanctions and penalize Penn State. We know that, and they know that. They were wrong. And no longer do we even care about the media and what they put out. They have lost their credibility <laughs> in our eyes. They print allegations and then fan the flames all without proof or validation or verification. They have no accountability to us anymore. But when you look back on the, night of, on the night of November 9th, 2011, we saw the result of unchecked power at Penn State. And beware of power that has no boundaries. Before that night, I did not know that the BOT could fire their president in the blink of an eye. I didn't know that. When I heard that President Spanier was supporting Penn State and our Penn State people, I felt confident, I had confident that, okay, he has commanded the situation. I felt very confident about that. Then, boom, led by John Surma, they announced the firing of Graham Spanier and Joe Paterno. And this made me realize that there were no checks and balances in place. If they could do that, if there are no checks and balances, they can fire the president, fire anybody, anyone who has a difference of opinion, who has another thought. If they can fire them, no checks and balances, then here at Penn State, we're lost. We have to hold people accountable. Every one of them, they represent us the alumni. They represent Penn State. That night, and I did watch it on television, the members of the board thought they could control and contain everything. They didn't see the damage that they were doing or that they could do. And a lot of us feel the damage continues to roll across our campus, and it will continue if we don't set up some sort of check and balances. When you have a small group of people, and there's no doubt, we know on the board, a lot of them have money, and they have connections, and they know how to leverage power and they become detached and just about them. And they think that they're above it all. And so when you have the unchecked power, we have a dangerous situation.
they have a saying. Once again, I do upon that, I love quotes. The price of anything, the price of anything, is the amount of life you exchange for it. And how did we get here? And where do we go from here? Right now, there's no doubt about it, we are divided. And we need to start to heal. And where do we start? I just have a couple of thoughts myself. And everybody else has their thoughts on how do we heal. I believe we start with a formal, formal apology from the Board of Trustees to Sue Paterno. It's already long overdue. And then there's another part. I do apologize to. But, you know, this is the lion's paw, and it made me made me think of a lion. And, and the lion is coming home and, and just roaming. And it goes to this vacant land that thinks is his home. He looks around and things are different. Things have been removed. Doesn't, doesn't seem the same. And he doesn't know what's wrong, what's going on here. He didn't recognize his home. And he looked at it and he said, no, this is my home. But they removed our history. They took our history. And the lion roared and tried to find, well, where am I? What is this land? What does this mean? We have no history. What do we stand for? And he was told that now he stands on the land of lies. And everything has been removed. And the lion roared that he wants his home back, and he wants his history. We're not going to let anybody take our history. <laughs> when you look at our history with success with honor, it was a game-changing vision never before undertaken. It was not just about football or being famous. It was about education, contributing to the world, and making something of yourself. It was about having the greatest graduation rates for your athletes and being one of the best in academic All-Americans. I wasn't one of those. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and all that, on top of it all, 409, accomplishing all that, growing young men academically and individually, still was able to give us, Penn State, the greatest number of football games won in NCAA history. 409, baby. <laughs> So 
So you better believe that we will fight for our history and we will not let anyone rewrite, re, rewrite our history for us. We know who we are. We are lions. And we hope that the Paterno family will allow us to put Joe's statue back in his rightful place in his home. We hope that you will. And, and for us players in our history, we want our wall. And if we, and I just want to say, if we have to build our own wall, we will. We know that Right now, there is unchecked power here at Penn State. There's only one group that has all the say and all the power. Not the alumni, not the president, not the coach, nobody. There's unchecked power. And we know what we must do. And we know we're going to do it because we are the alumni. We see the gold line, and we won't stop until we cross it. We have no deadline, and we'll keep going. Thank you. Thank you.